Right, today I'm going to be looking at um, Deliverance Ministries. Uh, it's something I've encountered and studied out and uh, I want to address the, the redundancy of uh, Deliverance Ministries and I'm going to show by the Word of God um, how it's unfounded and a deception and also what deliverance implies to those who practice deliverance ministries and quite simply the deliverance ministries I've come across is casting out demons basically it's taking the role away from the saviour it's this dispensation in the Christian age we live by faith, we, we don't live by by the signs and wonders of the uh, Jewish ministry to Israel, the groom's ministry to his people, his display, the Jews required a sign and Jesus displayed miracles to the glory of God to teach Israel and show Israel by miracles because every prophet showed signs to the hard-hearted to help them believe and no because the uh, Jews always required a sign a sign somebody with, with sign gifts i.e. the prophets had sign gifts uh, Elisha floated the axe and Elijah done all the prophets done uh, you know brought people back to life uh, uh, changed water into wine all the miracles the Lord performed had been done throughout the scriptures um, I think even Elijah brought the widow's son back from the brink of death I'm not sure if the, the the widow's son had died or the widow's child had died I think it had um, the Lord was performing these miracles as a sign to Israel in that dispensation after the death, burial and resurrection and the, the accomplishment of the Lord's atonement that he uh, accomplished alone on the cross and and gave the promise of the Holy Ghost to come uh, at Pentecost which came and from Acts onwards you can see the trans uh, the, the, the hand over the transformation of the the focus of the ministry going from Israel to then go to Israel and all the world, the Jews. Peter had a vision on the roof to to teach Peter a hardened or a disciplined Jewish believer who'd grown up in the Jewish faith, in the in the Torah, in the prophecies, in in the Word, in the Law and uh, it was commonly believed that um, Gentiles were unclean animals, they were heathens which is true, which is um, anyone with sin is an abomination to God is, a, is, is not perfect, so therefore um, corrupted doesn't mean God doesn't love his creations, it just means God was being honest about people's genetic makeup. It was corrupted. The world was full of sin, and the, the Lord taught the Jews that they were a, a chosen line, and they were to stay pure. Now they weren't without sin, but but the law kept the Jews sanctified, and when they were obedient to the law and the promises of the law, they were kept sanctified. When they sinned, they had to make a temporary sin offering and the Lord um, instituted that to keep them covered until the, the sin, sin offering, in, the living sin offering was to come, the lamb, the Passover lamb, the, the saviour, the messiah, the, the promised prophet, the promised 
king, the promised counsellor, the promised lord and the promised child and the promised saviour of the world and, and of Israel, the king of Israel. And he came and was rejected. And Peter saw a vision to show Peter the, 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 the Jew who was a of Jewish faith, of Jewish heritage and of Jewish belief and Jewish culture. So the Lord had to teach Peter that the Lord Jesus Christ had made it possible for the Gentiles to become clean and sanctified as well as the Jews. The, the law was now not only for the Jews but the, the whole world. But Israel was first in the bosom and then from the bosom it went out into the rest of the world, the heathens who were without law. They were um, animalistic, they were tribalistic, whereas the Jews were had the law which kept them civil, but they were still sinners. So Peter had to understand how uh, the gospel was going, going, there was going to be a transition from the ministry that Jesus displayed with miracles. Now the chosen apostles were all blessed with those sign gifts and those sign gifts are recorded in the scriptures, the healing, like Paul saved the, uh, brought the young boy back from death, who, the young man who fell out the, the, third, or the second or third story window and fell to his death. Uh, listening to Paul um, expound the, the, the testimony of the word, the living word. And Paul spoke on for hours and this young man fell asleep, fell out the window. And Paul, when he'd, when he'd finished, went down and, and laid on, on the young man and brought him back to life. Um, Peter done many miracles and he had the sign gifts because he was an apostle he was chosen with these gifts and i believe the 70 were blessed with those gifts temporarily but these gifts were for israel and there's a transition of the foundation now christ is the foundational rock laid and the apostles are part of the foundation inclusive and the lord is the chief corner of all those stones that are laid down, who laid down their lives. And this foundation is set. So after the setting of the foundation, the sign gifts were on the earth, but as the apostles died, those sign gifts disappeared. Um, you might be asking, what's this to do with deliverance? Well, it's, it, it's doctrinal, doc trinally foundational to understand the Lord's uh, transition into uh, the miracles into to faith alone in Jesus Christ to be delivered so it's the Lord that delivers the soul not not um, an apostle not a, a person laying on the hands to do healing uh, these sign gifts, the gifts of tongues, for example. Now, the, you hear all these char charismatic, you see all these sickly, awful, charismatic churches and their hoorah and their hullabaloo. What, what, what goes on in those doors is, is, is a disgusting sight to the Lord. It's a disgrace how these... Um, ideas are taken up and, and these things have to be dealt with and there's many all, all, all the word is being ironed out by the apostles by Paul by the laying down of the foundation and these gifts ended and they died out with the apostles the foundation was laid it was set in stone the holy word is complete it's a, a finished done deal it's a closed it's a it's a sealed book it's completed the lord there's nothing nothing that needs add into it and, it and there's nothing you can take away from it it's as it should be the lord has left us this faithful record to help us iron out that which is and that which is not 
and every believer receives that fullness at the first so they know it at the first that's why we have a record of the holy scriptures and I recently encountered someone trying to indoctrinate me now using my discernment through the study of the word and 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 being over the over over my christian years as a believer as a born again believer as a safe believer is uh, you, all christians will face um chastisement and correction uh, no uh, no brother or sister however mature they are however young they are is beyond correction beyond chastisement it's something that we all we all sin daily we all fall short daily and that's why we have the scriptures we have the all everything we need is being provided for us in 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 the king james holy bible the preserved word or, or bibles from the you know the un the that are translated from the uncorrupted text, which the King James was translated from faithfully. Um, so it's all been dealt with, but time and time again, um, whether it's now this person who um, come alongside me, um, now I, 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 I'm not 100% sure if this person is a spy let me I'll re, let me read Galatians 2 Galatians 2 uh, chapter 4 let's uh, uh, bit of context uh, chapter 2 in 14 years that 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also this is Paul speaking uh, then Paul uh, Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So in this circumstance, uh, there was somebody posing as a Christian, trying to teach young believers, um, in this case, Titus um, was compelled to be circumcised. Uh, uh, but neither title at all. Anyway, there was um, people throwing in uh, misinformation, come posing as a believer in the body, and, f and then throwing in Im information. So, and that, and if you follow this information, it will lead you, lead you into bring you into bondage because you'll be in, into bond. You'll be brought into bondage by believing a deception. Therefore, you'll be bo bound by that deception. And that will be a thorn, a blemish in your, in your charity, in your testimony, and that will affect you. Now, the, um, the person who kept encouraging me to be a deliverance ministry, and I could discern it early on, certain things, and uh, they were like little, little red flags or little amber flags at first. And I had to evaluate. Well, this could be a because it was email contacts. I couldn't. I, I couldn't see face to face with this person, so it was behind a veil. So I, I'm, I was going by faith and by their heart. And uh, I'm also very aware that people can imitate and say exactly what a person would say, so they can appear to be real and human, and they can practice that and. Uh, convey that very well and that can deceive people 
but in the back in un, in subtly in the background was were these doctrinal challenges undermining my own faith and then I started to catch all these amber signals and then the red flags and so um, I addressed it and uh, left it at that and moved on um, and I thought well I, I'm, I'm going to record my experience to help somebody else who comes across deliverance ministries in, in a simple way I could uh, I explained it to the person I was responding to with love and, and with the word of God the only way I know how rather than getting into a fight or anything I just you know, rebuffed what what they were teaching, called out what their intentions were, what I discerned, and uh, gave the scriptures and um, left it to the Lord for his mercy to either help this person or correct them or convict them, whatever their intention. Um, they could be a saved believer so that's where I had to be cautioned, just to call them out too prematurely, because I might have knocked them flying. Um, but this person was uh, mature and sort of coming alongside me and putting their arm around me in a big brother way in, in, in certain instances, trying to override... override uh, my own authority, my own faith, my own belief and as though they were an authority. So I started to discern the intention and I recognised the uh, spirit and uh, worked. my guard come up and uh, I recognised what was going on. So that could have been a saved believer deceived or I could have been an unsaved believer in Christ deceived so that's twofold or on the other extreme of that it could have been a very calculated spy that is somebody who is your enemy who's the enemy of the cross who poses Christians deliberately they come among the Christian body and then they undermine young believers' faith and they were put in little doubts. Now this this brother, uh, or person claiming to be my brother, um, I wanted to give, a, I still give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, I'll wait till I hear from this, this brother. Um, but some people are poses brothers and they are well versed um, remember the Lord was tempted by Satan in, 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 in you know in his season of temptation where he uh, beat the devil in the wilderness he resisted the devil and the temptations that he that only the Messiah would encounter and he he he, he got the full whack of Satan's power and only only the Lord Jesus could conquer Satan and it's only through Jesus that a believer is able to over, get the victory over Satan in this world and his deception and the Holy, and the Holy Word helps us be a discerner let's read a scripture uh, Hebrews 4 helps you to uh, discern people's intentions once you are disciplined in the word and, and here's, here lies the lesson it's for any believer it's to be disciplined in the word and, and in prayer in supplication all the things that the Lord's instructed for us for our um, benefit because that's why we have the word it's a living water it's a f refreshment we need every day uh, we keep our eyes single to the glory we'll be full of light if if our eyes not single we, we become full of the darkness we lose sight of that light and we become null null or or dim and we can uh, uh fall away for a season um if we're not careful hebrews 4 
chapter 12, uh, verse 12. Uh, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Uh, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the son of God uh, let us hold fast our profession for we have not a high priest which cannot be touch with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like we as we are yet without sin uh, as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly in, unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help in time of need so that's a reconfirmation that the holy spirit of the lord and the scriptures the living word, the written word, is sees all things and is a discerner of people's intentions, people's motives, and um, it enables us to f work out, shine our light on what is what, and to discern well where where's this person coming from. Now I'm not saying we're beyond mistakes, and. Uh, but with uh, the word and, and and discipline, we become more sharpened, and we uh, as we grow into the into the uh, the you know full stature that we're growing into, um, we come become sharper in our discernment. From we 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 become uh, resilient, and uh, it's bla it's black and white. It becomes a uh, evident in a second through experience and through discipline in the scripture what's what now that takes experience that takes uh, um, having to go through it have to walk in the walk um, so this is one of, one of the things I've encountered and many other things that, that go hand in hand with this doctrinally that, that is undermined one is the belief in uh, once saved, always saved. That was another thing he f that this person threw in, uh, you know, and refuted. And uh, but it was not direct; it was like uh, indirect. Um, and so I could figure out that the, the motive wasn't good; it wasn't right. So. Um, I put my shield up, put my sword up, and uh, held my sword. Up. Uh, so I'm going to share quite simply how the, what deliverance ministries are. You know, are they? They're not biblically scriptural. They might, you know, they might have been for the seventy and the apostles and the Lord, who was uh, displaying his miracles to deliver people. But today, the uh, the Lord delivers. And you can't rob God of his sovereignty, of his glory. Um, I'm going to read that. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Uh, judge not that ye be not judged. For, what, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you again. Uh, everybody says, "Oh, we shouldn't make judgments," but but we, when we study the scriptures, uh, if you study Deuteronomy, you study Proverbs, you study the um, the New Testament, we see that Christ is the just measure. He's a just measure, the only just measure. And when you receive the just measure, you you it enables you. It affords you to make a judge adjustment, uh, a judge, um, a just measurement, and a human with the just measurement can make mistakes. But that judge me measurement, if it's done justly, 
it is a, a just measurement to measure and uh, as a standard of what is and what is not so we have um, the record now um, verse 3 and why behold beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye so the, um, this scripture is uh, I think the second half of the Sermon on the Mount in the Lord's ministry speaking to Israel and his disciples uh, why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye or wilt thou say to thy brother let me pull out the moat of thine own eye and behold a beam is in, in thine own eye thou hypocrite first cast out the beam out of thine own eye and then thou shalt then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat of thy brother's eye right I'm going to stop there and I'm gonna, I've used that scripture quite simply because what the Lord was saying is if, if we're to say, if, if uh, to ask the question, if you come across a deliverance ministry and you ask them the question, how were you saved? Now, they might have been claimed to be saved by a deliverance ministry and maybe a person has been touched by a deliver, deliverance ministry and gone on to put their faith in Jesus Christ alone and been saved. But that doesn't authenticate the uh, deliverance ministry what the Lord's saying here about first take out the beam out of thine own eye now the question is how did these people become saved in the first place if you've been saved you know that the only person who took the beam out of your eye was the Lord because the Lord's speaking here it's him he's the author of this word he's saying you know it's me it's I that uh, safe people you can't go and start doing it you can't start claiming you can judge people and start saving them no you can only tell tell them how you were saved you know you can't didn't you can't rob somebody of the the thing that you've received you can't um, go and be saved and then teach something completely different how you know robbing the lord of his atonement so a deliverance anything like casting out devils speaking in tongues speaking in tongues was just uh inter the holy spirit showing the power of um while the apostles were on with the sign gifts the power for the israel any jews and to show people in the vicinity of any culture of any race the power of god and it was the translation of foreign languages into uh, the language of, of the person hearing or or an interpreter was used uh, a human interpreter that with the holy spirit could interpret into the language of the audience so it wasn't speaking a nonsense nonsensical language it was the holy spirit reaching the ears of people in their own language and insert and then later on it was through an interpreter one one would speak the tongues and the other one would interpret what they were saying it's not something you're going to encounter today but it's something that ended with the apostles like um, if you consider all the people in, in Christ's ministry that were like Lazarus well where's Lazarus today you know if he if, if, if he'd still be alive but he died because he was a sinner and uh, he um, got sick the disciples got sick you know the the 12 apostles didn't stay around the earth healing people though that was just for testimony um, Jesus would have healed everybody in his vicinity anyone that believer or not 
that came to him and wanted healing, he would have healed, whether they had faith or not. The Lord could heal people um, by going up and touching them or just thinking it or just praying for it in his heart, wishing it. Um, but those gifts ended with the apostles and the sealing of the foundation and the, the, into the dispensation of the church age, which is we are saved. We live by faith. We're saved by faith. We are saved by repentance towards God and trusting in he who dispensed salvation. Uh, the Lord God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And... Uh, that is deliverance, he's the deliverer. So you can only teach that. You can only teach that you come to faith by repentance and believing in Jesus Christ. And that's what saves you, that's what heals you. If you're, if you're saved with uh, no legs, if you're saved with um, a part of your head blown off and your brains have been damaged, you're going to remain in that physical state with those difficulties. Now, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, you can understand those difficulties and, and comprehend what you lack by the Holy Spirit. If you were mentally ill, the Holy Spirit would teach you where that mental illness caused the root of it. And the, the Holy Ghost would help you heal from it. But if it's an organical impairment, that impairment is going to remain because no. Um, now I don't know if if over time your whole genetic makeup can change, and you could, it would be possible for somebody to transfigure themselves and be completely healed. But I don't know if that is inside the Lord's will because the Lord's will is is appointed unto men to die once. Now there is exceptions, there's the uh, Enoch, Elijah, the rapture of the bride, but other than that it's appointed unto men to die, and then after death the judgment. So if you're saved, you're, you're judged already, you're judged by the, the righteous judge who's forgiven you, he's exonerated you, but if you die unsaved, you, you you go into eternal judgment and punishment because you've rejected the Messiah, you've rejected the Saviour. So that's the only way you can be delivered. Um, so that is an important... I'm going to put some scriptures up um, after just to clarify how we're saved in, in this dispensation. So if you come across a deliverance ministry... Um, know that you don't need anybody to teach you you have the faithful word you have the scriptures and it's a done deal it's sealed and you you just take confidence in that which the lord's blessed you and equipped with it like the scripture i read in hebrews we, we can boldly go to the throne of grace now as a young uh, one of the, the hardest one of the the greatest lessons I learned as a Christian was when I was first saved. I, d I didn't really appreciate what what I was saved from or what I'd received. Um, as something I had to grow into. I had to realise. I had to. I had to um, still conquer the old man. The Lord is still working through me, showing me areas where. I was, you know, in danger. My my loins weren't girded, you know. So I had to pick up my shield of faith, and I made many mistakes. And one of my first transgressions was uh, unbelief, because I didn't trust. I transgressed because I didn't know any better. I didn't know the word, so I believed that the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believed the word. I didn't know it. I didn't understand it. I hadn't studied it and measured and 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 learned how how it's constructed, how it's outlaid, and and what its uses are for, and why 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 what's the wisdom in the word, and why it's been given the believer, why it's been preserved. 
and why it's on earth and uh, so my first transgression as a, a Christian was unbelief because I didn't trust God I trusted my own opinion or what, or what I did would not my lack of knowledge and I went looking for you know a true church sort of thing I didn't and I just turned my back briefly and then run into danger and the Lord had to come and help me and that was um, you know, Lord can't deny himself if you transgress there's consequences so that's a chastisement because you're, you're out of the way I didn't mean to be out of the way the Lord knew that and he mercifully delivered me back to the point where I started and that was a lesson and the lesson was to trust in the Lord to trust in his word to trust in the testimony I'd received at the first and the Holy Ghost told me simply that there's that, 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 I, that I was saved by Jesus Christ alone that Jesus was God sent from God the Father and that all else was, was vain all else was a lie and it, this was the devil's world and everyone was under, under the influence of the devil and I'd been delivered from that, I'd received the victory, so I knew I'd, I'd received everything I needed from the start, but I had to I had to find myself approved, that's what it was I'd received, and that's why I have the Holy Word. And that's why we have teachers to teach us, to re-emphasise what it is we've been taught, what it is we've been given. So these things have to be dealt with, because time and time again, um, you know, there's uh, new new believers coming through, and they're, and they're facing the same the same confusion. So it has to be continually dealt with because you're not going to be able to erect a, a like um, a statue a, of like a stone plates in a dedicated park, so all the, the whole world knows about it. Wouldn't you know? It's not going to be allowed. We with um, all the lessons of the Christians. <laughs> We, that's why we have uh, the written word. We have a faithful record and we have a faithful witness by the Holy Spirit. And it enables us to discern what it is that's a deception, what's a lying spirit, what's the truth, what's a her what's heresy. But with the Holy Ghost alone, it's not enough. You can't rely just on the Holy Ghost. You need the, the Holy Ghost and the, and the Holy Word. Uh, uh, it's the same author, it comes from God. So the Lord has authored by the Holy Spirit the word to be written in men's hearts. And through the men's hearts we we have to and the, the living account of of the living word, we have the Holy Scriptures and the promise of the word to come through the prophets and, and Israel. We, that was all briefed by the Holy Spirit. And if you've received the Holy Spirit, you you need to know what it is the Holy Spirit's revealed, and that's why we have a complete record within the in the Word, and that enables us, any any of us, any believer, um, to discern and to work out what is false doctrine and what is true, and we don't need anyone to teach us that. We can, we, we must trust God. Uh, let me read um, Jeremiah seventeen. And this is a lesson I learned, and this is a scripture, one of the scriptures, the Lord brought me to my senses and comforted me and blessed me richly, you know, made me repentant, made me turn back to my, you know, my first love, my senses, what I'd been given freely and hadn't appreciated fully, you know, I didn't know any different. And that was here. That was the lesson I had to learn to trust God above all, to trust His Word. Don't trust what men say. Don't trust what Christians profess. You know, don't trust what I say. Don't follow me. Follow the Lord Jesus. Follow the apostles. Follow the people in the Word. Follow after those. Don't follow anyone else. And study the Word. And and my advice, if you're a new believer, my advice would once you're saved. Firstly, don't go running anywhere to, you know, to, like into church or anything. Just um, appreciate your salvation every day. Read your scriptures every day and be thankful every day. And realise that that which you are holding on to at the beginning is holding on to you. And once you realise that, you're not going to go very far. 
but if you haven't got that groundedness at the start you you can you can jump into the fire because you could be vulnerable you could have um i was suffering from i didn't realize until 20 years into my walk that i had been um violently traumatized as a child and blacked it out and i and i'd also um it's still things are unfolding that I'm not really going to talk about at this point, but uh, it's all building a picture. The Lord's not revealing things that happen to me in one go because it's, you know, you compartmentalise things for a reason because they're too hard to deal with. And um, I'm starting to get a picture of what happened and, and it's just, there's more and more and more and more things unfolding. Now that court, of course, everybody's completely unique and different. So, you, you know, there is pitfalls, and but there's people that are a bit more vulnerable. A bit, you know, if we, I'm going to do a study on Corinth, um, chap, Corinthians chapter twelve, First Corinthians crap, chapter twelve, because it shows all the, the different believers in the body, and then there's the Lord says that the weak are the most, you know, to give on honor to the most weak. And, and there, there's wisdom in that, and uh, I'm going to do a study on that. But there are very weak people that start weak and remain weak, you know. Uh, but but that's a, the Lord says it's a necessary part of the body of Christ. You know, we have we have the st really strong shoulders and heads. We have the arms. We have the fingers. You know, we have the torso and the navel, and you know the firm legs and the strong feet. And then we have the toes and the fingers and all the little little blemishes, you know. But it's uh, the bride, the bride of Christ, uh, the Lord's beloved, the Lord's beloved wife, the Lord's beloved children chosen, that have chosen salvation, that have believed and received. So, you know, um, you my advice to a young believer is just to stand on, stay on the rock in that joy you've experienced in that holy spirit and remain close to the lord don't go straying into areas that keep you away from that daily discipline and if you to if i could go back in time that's exactly what i would do you know i wouldn't stray i wouldn't want to go through that experience i did but i'm grateful for that experience and i couldn't avoid it and it taught me this beautiful lesson. So I hadn't really lost anything. You know, I, I, I possibly gained something for the benefit of others other than, rather than myself, which is a benefit for me because it's a blessing to be able to share something and to for that that uh, love to, to go on and bless someone. That would be a blessing to me as that's a blessing to Christ because that's his blessing. So I'm very grateful for that, those bad experiences and I think we should be grateful for trials and sufferings because that's, that's how we learn, that's how we grow. And the Lord loves us and he loves us. So if you, if you are chastised, you know, that, that's something to rejoice in. And as a Christian, I've never found the chastisements of the Lord at all unpleasant. They're, they are rewarding, they are uh, refreshing and edifying and and humbling I like to be humbled because it's then I feel where I am closest to the Lord is when I'm humble or, or when I've been humbled when I humble myself or when something I've had to learn has humbled me you know a smack or a r running into a lamppost for being too cocky or, or some, whatever the old nature trips a believer up and uh, you encounter, you will encounter all these things, you, all these uh, different um, devices, and you are equipped. All Christians are equipped to deal with them. So I hope that's been an encouragement, and I hope that's been uh, clear. And I've covered all 
all areas water tightly that um, deliverance ministries are redundant uh, Paul said I robbed ch other churches to do you a service I robbed, I robbed churches of their wages you know we don't you don't need the priesthoods or priests or one man pastors that, that there's a you know an appointed head that comes from the top and he he's put into a parish and then you have a load of people off the street go into this parish that's not christianity that is uh that's the world's order that's not biblical you know the lord raises up here there and everywhere and then the te the tears will raise up around it and this world is full of choked with tears there's too many chiefs and not enough indians because the gospel is very simple we're just to preach the cross we're just to warn our neighbor love our neighbor as himself and part of that that is to warn people to warn people we have to be equipped we we have to be studying the word to realize what it is we're we're equipped we have to find ourselves approved and we find ourselves approved by resting in the lord daily growing in the lord daily in the, confessing our sins and uh walking in faith on a day-to-day -day basis to stay in fellowship keeping our eyes single to that that glory and every believer will fluctuate um, whatever their life experience is whatever their turmoil is whatever they encounter um, believers will some will struggle more than others some will find it difficult than, more than others some will have more problems than others I don't know everything but I, I, I've only got my own perspective and that's what what I've observed and looked to looked up to and seen in in, in good good examples and um where I've encountered bad examples um in 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 uh, ministries or you know nobody is um 100% super hyper uh, holy and righteous consistently um uh, people have uh, natures we have a dual nature that's another thing I'm going to cover the dual nature of a Christian uh, the, the sin nature uh, the old man because uh, you come across ministries that believe once you've reached a certain level in your steadfastness you're never going to you don't sin because they believe that there's a scripture you cannot sin a believer cannot sin well no no safe believer can sin because they have Christ's righteousness but they have their old nature which they can fall back into so they can't sin because they've been forgiven of all their sins but their old nature can sin so you have to confess that sin to remain in that spirit where which cannot sin and this is what uh, many christians cannot discern the difference they cannot see the duality in a, in a believer they overlook the sins of Moses, they overlook the sins of David, they overlook the sins of Peter, of Paul. Uh, you, you know, all the great sinned, Paul sinned. Jesus didn't sin because he's the exemplar, he's the holy Lord, he's a precious, holy, you know, hope, the, the light, the saviour, you know, who wants sin? Uh, once you've tasted the Lord Jesus Christ and and the other you know the other thing that I want to cover is uh, you can lose your salvation now anybody who's tasted the joy of uh, of the Holy Spirit of being uh, baptized into the body of Christ and that joy you're never going to lose that I don't care what sin you do how despondent you get that light is always as bright the memory of it never goes I mean you could I'm not going to suggest this but you, you could go out of your way to try and hide from it but you'll never shake your first love you cannot be unborn once you're born you cannot be born into the fellowship of Christ and then become a beloved son of Christ 
of, of God the Father given you to his son and his son purchasing you with his blood. And then read I, um, Isaiah chapter 42, uh, his, uh, speaking of redeemed Israel, you know, and, and those Israel outside as well who are ungrafted, you know, he, he says, um, how can I forget you? Um, I've, I have you engraven in, in the palms of my hands. Once you're saved, once you've received the Holy Spirit, you cannot lose the Holy Spirit. You can vex the Holy Spirit and you can f fall away and have to be renewed unto repentance. You have to... Um, well, you can't, but you can fall out of fellowship and have to confess your sin to get back into fellowship but you can't fall you once you've repented you don't need to repent again because you've you've been forgiven of all your sins but you have to if you stray that repentance is always active when you're out of line so you remain in that repentance and you have to bring yourself back into line through confession and the Lord brings you back into line, into fellowship, into forgive, into that the blessing of His forgiveness, which you've received and always received. But if you go willfully sinning, you're going to lose that fellowship, and your your testimony will diminish. But you'll never you'll never stop believing in Jesus Christ. You might think you're not saved. You might wrestle. You might get vexed. You may uh, you may get rendered because you're in the wrong crowd. And these things will turn around to you because you, you, you're out of fellowship, therefore you're in fellowship with things you shouldn't be with. You perhaps are in company with people you shouldn't be with or you're entertaining things that are keeping you away from the scriptures. And they're not going to do you any good. So you need to get back into repentance. Repentance is like a light switch. Once it's on, it stays on. So once you've you've uh, activated that switch it's on always but if you put a bag over your head it becomes dark and you have to confess your sin to remove the bag off your head to be remain back in the fellowship and the the light of christ and and the only way to do that to sustain that is is to be thankful every day to pray to make your supplication known to, to the lord to speak to the lord to grow in that relationship you've received at the first and that is hard I know that is hard and if you're if you're a person with a background of abuse and addiction and iniquity in your family you know that the discipline is a hard very hard to start with but it ha it's it's so rewarding when when you receive those victories when the Lord gives you those victories over whatever it is anger bad language, uh, addiction, whatever it is, whatever you battle with, the Lord will um, give you the victory over, over those things. Um, but the, a, a, a believer's relationship is very personal, very sacred, and it's something that shouldn't really ever be interfered with. We should never throw stumbling blocks in front of people. We should never... We should never really make unrighteous judgments by our own measurement. We should always measure by that 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 like Christ, and that and only Christ can make those judgments. Sometimes it's a righteous judgment to say, "I can't make a judgment here. I can't judge this individual because I, you know, there's um, things I just don't understand." That's a righteous judgment. Only the Lord can judge that person. I I cannot at the moment. Um, you may be, you know, we're monkey mechanics, the Lord's a chief engineer. <coughs> so you have to be careful with making sharp judgments. We can make uh, judgments on on the wicked, uh, the world, or generally on the world, you know, by the Holy Scriptures. Uh, if you're not born again, you're going to hell. You know, that's a... That or let the dead bury the dead. You know, to the wicked, these are harsh judgments. These are hard. How dare you? Who are you to judge? No. Well, I've received the the, the righteous judge judgment. I've been judged. Therefore, I can make those judgments. I've been judged by 
that I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. I'm not I'm not being holier than you. I'm just being honest by the judgment I've been judged with and I've received forgiveness. Therefore I can judge. I can judge what you know, what potatoes I want. I can judge what uh you know, items I want to buy and what items I, I... We all make judgments, but it's to make unrighteous judgments. We can call people a fool, but if we call a righteous man a fool, we're in danger of hellfire, making an unrighteous judgment. If we were to call the Lord a fool when he was on the earth, that's an unrighteous judgment, and you would be in danger of rejecting uh, the Lord, calling him a fool. And you turn your back away, and you go to hell. That that's what that scripture means. Don't don't call anyone a fool, you know. But we can call people who don't believe foolish, because it's a foolish thing. The scripture says they will realise when they go to hell how foolish they were, because how simple the gospel is. And that's why people don't believe it, because it's so simple. You just believe in Jesus Christ, and you're done. Like when you're a little baby. You were done, you were there, you were ready. Didn't need anything, you know. Of course, you needed your the physical nourishment and the things to sustain you through life. But you were equipped, you were pure in heart, in your understand, in innocence. You, but you, were, you did have inherited sin. So you have to go through a probation to realise you're a sinner. And to get back to that pureness, you need to be born again. And then you're restored to that pure consciousness of a, of a child. You don't become childish and start playing with Lego and stuff. But you become childlike in your spirit. You become dependent on your father. You could become dependent on your heavenly father and your saviour, who's your heavenly father, Jesus. And um, he's also your friend. He's also your lord and like a brother like an elder brother, because he'd become a man, so we could relate to him, and we could like love him as, and, and learn to love him as we are loved. That's why he became a man, so we could relate to him. And, it, and the gospel is that simple, we just believe and receive, and then we're, we're, we're set for eternity. But we, but we have to remain in that which we started, and we and we can go on to service and service comes with rewards and um, inter eternal consequences for doing those things and it eternal blessings for being obedient to your calling and uh, eternal consequences for uh, not putting the time and effort in if you, you know, like the Lord said, you, you reap you reap what you sow. If you reap in the flesh, you sow in the flesh. If you reap in the spirit, you know, if you sow in the spirit, you'll reap in the spirit. If you uh, sow in the flesh, you'll reap what the flesh is. And the flesh is death. To the saved believer, it'll be nothing. You'll have no reward. You'll have nothing to show for your salvation, barring your salvation. Um, and these things that we learn through study and experience um, so uh, deliverance any doctrine you're unsure about it's all sealed in the in the holy word and uh, deliverance ministries are robbers they're liars and they need correcting they need to be avoided uh, they're false laying on their hands and healing you know, that's robbing somebody of going to the Lord for healing, that spiritual healing, that wholeness. You know, the Lord hasn't sent out Pete, his, his disciples to lay their hands on and do miracles. Otherwise, they'd be going in the hospital, healing all the sick children and healing all the elderly. And they'd be made, taking up the slack for the NHS, wouldn't they? Well, are they doing that? No. Uh, and, and then they turn around and say, oh, it's because people have a lack of faith. If people have a lack of faith, why do you have the gift? You know, we have the we have the cross, and people either put their faith in the cross or they don't. That's all all a believer can preach. That's all a believer can do: contend for the faith and preach the cross, preach the word, warn their neighbour. And that person, it's up to that person to appropriate that atonement. Just like all believers have come 
come the same way to the cross. The Lord's drawn them to the cross. They've, they've, they've confessed their sin. Have mercy on me, Lord, a sinner. The Lord has appropriated his part and kept his word. Save that sinner. And that's all you can teach. If you're teaching anything else than that, you're a liar and you're deceived. And you, you're like, it's like the, um, the Lord gave the parable of the debtor. And he, he forgave the debtor. And the debtor went out and beat up all the people that owed him money. You know, it's a bit like that. You, you can't teach something. You can't pull the beam out of anybody's eye until you've saved yourself. And once you've pulled the beam, had the ball beam pulled out by the Lord, then you can say to people how you had the beam pulled out of your eye. But the Lord put it in a parable. He didn't. He didn't give the, you know, the truth because it's him speaking, and people overlook who who was speaking here, and they take it upon themselves to think they can go and deliver and save people, and they're caught out. So be aware of that, and and if you've been caught out by that, you're only you're only one step away from being put right in 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 by the Lord in the Word, and you might have to swallow your pride and realise you've made a mistake, you've been deceived, but you you know that's part of life, that's part of growing, and that should be rejoiced, it, that should be embraced. You know, fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know. Uh, but you should be happy for the being corrected. You should be happy. You should be seeking that in your heart to be corrected. We should be seeking that which is one heart and one mind. You know who wants who's who who has been saved that has come up the road with all this confusion that doesn't wants that confusion rid of for the people coming up behind. But we we've, we live in a fallen world and we've got these enemies planting tears and we've been told about these tears so we have to keep reminding people keep sharing with what the word teaches and how people don't need anyone to teach them because they have the word they have a testimony or they can receive a testimony they don't need teachers like the, the false teachers claim that you know that they're it's all them and and, they, and you need them you know, a, a, a genuine elder or a teacher will will take it up because there's a necessary need for it to be done and that's the motive not 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 to be seen doing it but because it's right and it's necessary it's loving it's like an elder brother if he's gone out with his younger siblings he, he's taking the responsibility for the younger ones and he's keeping an eye out on the little ones that's the kind of heart an elder a teacher the lord raises to to have learnt those things in order to to be through to go round that um, that lesson, you know, to to make those mistakes, to learn the order, and to learn the word and what it is they've received, and to find themselves approved. It's only it's only until you've tasted the fruit, and then you can begin to teach what it is you've learned, and and that's part, and that's an ongoing lesson. And it is in my life. I've not. I don't believe I've, re you know, reached a full maturity. I'm because I'm still growing. I don't think I believe reached that full maturity until I'm looking at the Saviour, kneeling before the Saviour, and realising, and cut, you know, receiving that blessing of His salvation, which I've received. Um, but I think you can reach a point where you know you're saved, and you can know that you're not going to fall if, if if you're consistently applying those lessons that you've been through and that the Lord has brought you to a point where you're grounded, you're more grounded and you're established in the word and you're found yourself approved and you're you know you know you're saved and you, you can teach salvation what salvation is you can share and warn people so um, I'm going to leave it there and uh, wish everybody well. I hope this is edifying to somebody. I hope this is um, helpful to somebody perhaps struggling with deliverance ministries and this has been a blessing. And I uh, close there with thanks to the Lord and uh, close in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.